Hi, this is Walter Wiese with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my fly tying video for December 14th, 2020. And as you can see here, all I'm doing today is a basic McFly foam egg. Um, you know, on the surface, very simple fly, but I find them easy to screw up and uh, I think a lot of people are frustrated tying eggs. And I've got one little trick in tying these that I think helps quite a bit. Uh, and so I'm going to show that. That's I don't have a whole lot of time today. That's one of the reasons I'm choosing something so simple to tie, or at least so short, so brief to tie. And uh, stay tuned at the end of the video for the announcement as to why I don't have a lot of time, because it may be of interest for planning your 2021 fishing trips. So the hook I have in the vise here is a size 18 scud hook, so a little one. Um, I like my my eggs really really small. Yeah, I think I think uh, too often they're tied way too large and. Uh, you know the fish just don't eat them at least you know this is a trout size egg you know if you're fishing for steelhead or something that's a little different my thread here and this is kind of crucial is going to be 75 denier uh gel spun in white they don't make this in a fire orange i wish they did if they they do make it in a regular orange you could also use that um you really need to use gel spun thread for this this fly this is this is very thin stuff it's uh 75 denier which 80 is usually about 70 denier so it's quite thin but it's very very strong and that when you're tying any sort of egg will really really help you the only downside of this stuff is that it's slick so i'm going to start that right at the eye and make several turns over that thread before I uh, I get down to the bend there. And then my, my scissors here, uh, which are another part of the deal on tying the supply. These are synthetic scissors. Um, I buy these from Hairline. I think it's a, I think it's a Loon scissors. Um, or No, it's a Dr. Slick scissors. But you definitely want to have a good, fairly heavy duty pair of, of scissors here. I mean, if you can uh, get a hold of a pair of craft shears, that would be better than a basic fly tying scissor. Um, you know, I, I use these guys for any of my my uh, synthetic materials, but they're really crucial on tying eggs. Now, what I'm doing here is, you can't see the bobbin because I'm zoomed in really, really close on that hook, but I've just twisted my thread to cord it because that's going to help dig into the material. Now, I'm going to tie this with a little less egg yarn than you might, you know, see uh, on a lot of other videos. That's how much I have. Um, you know, clump about as thick as my finger for an 18 here. I'd tie a little bit more for a 16. And you'll often see these tied. So this is McFly foam, which comes in kind of a, a mass. It doesn't come in a, it, it doesn't look like a yarn. Um, and, and you really should use McFly foam for tying your basic eggs. I use traditional egg yarn for a lot of other things. Um, I actually use it for my Y2K eggs, which I uh, actually use honestly more often than a McFly foam egg. Um, but you can't get those quite this small. Um, but that, for tying, you know, your standard round glow ball, glow bug, um, you should use this stuff. It's much, much better because it's stretchy and it will compress under tension. Um, the traditional egg yarn will not do that. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just take that, and I've got that in my, finger, my hands here. I'm just going to hold that directly across the, the shank towards the camera there just like I would if I was tying in a spinner. And I've got that kind of a tight pinch, you know, roughly an inch from the end there. I'm going to bring my thread over the top. In fact, I'm going to retwist my thread because all that twist came out when I was sitting there yakking. I'm going to bring one turn over and then grab both ends of that. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to grab both ends of that material here and pull it tight and then use my, my middle finger and my ring finger of my free hand to just pull down right on the middle of that bundle to get a, a good small tying point. And I'll do two more turns that same direction. So right now, you can see there, that's held at kind of a 45 degree angle forward on the uh, opposite side of the hook from me here. But then I'm gonna bring the thread around, bring it up to the hook shank, and then almost directly straight, uh, you know, parallel to the hook shank forward. You don't wanna go across um, exactly on this one. You don't really wanna do a 45 degree turn, it's more, almost parallel to the hook shank there and the reason for that is um, you want a very very small tie-in point here again hopefully that's clear you see that's that's as small as I can get it that's one reason why you don't want to use some other strong thread like a uh, flat wax nylon or something which is much much thicker now what I like to do here is build up a little dam I'm kind of wedging back into that uh, that yarn there again to kind of lock that in but you can see here that this is not 
this is not secure yet. And this is one area where I differ. I, I rely on my friend super glue uh, to really lock the fly in here and that allows me to make I think, fewer thread wraps and they don't have to be quite as perfect. So all I did there was, you know, is essentially a half hitch. I mean, I tied a two-turn whip finish, which will not hold. And like I said, the reason for that is I'm going to rely on super glue here. But before I go putting super glue anywhere, I'm going to take this, pull up both ends of that material, and just pull straight up vertically. Don't twist it at all. And that's one reason why you see I'm letting it go and then grabbing it again, is I want to make sure I'm not twisting it. Um, but I'm going to pull that straight up. And I'm going to bring my scissors in and just one fell swoop here and I'm going to make this sucker small. You see where, basically the way you control your egg size is how close to the hook you trim it. Now if I trimmed it up here, uh, this would be like a size 12 egg. But I'm going to trim it right down here and look how small it's going to be. Now, looks pretty good on top of the hook right now. If you look at the bottom it looks terrible. Um, you can obviously see all the thread wraps there. Now if you used orange thread you could probably leave it just like this and it would be fine. Um, you know, because then you'd have your sort of eye spot on the bottom there. I'm going to come in here with my super glue and I'm just going to paint all of that thread base that I created. And then while that, that glue is still wet, I'm just going to come in here very, very lightly brush that material upward. Um, and then, you know, if you spin it around, then it would be downward like I did there. But see, I'm not, I'm not compressing that. I'm just very lightly brushing my fingers down. Uh, and so the sort of edges of that yarn ball I made up on top of the hook are going to be wicking up some of that glue and then sort of sticking together like that. And so now you see from the bottom there and it's, you can still see a little bit of a seam there hopefully. Um, I've got this thing, uh, let's see if I can turn down the, I've got the exposure basically all the way down here because obviously I'm wearing a black shirt and I've got a, a pale pink egg. But anyway, hopefully you can see there, there's still a very faint um, seam right there, but it's not anywhere near as noticeable as it was before. And then if you come in here and you've got any flyaways, I'm going to come in and just kind of trim those even with the uh, even with the ball. And then that's all there is to it. But it's I really think that using that super glue helps get you that round shape. Um, you know, with a minimum amount of effort. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I will not see you next week, probably, because I am uh, leaving tomorrow morning at 3 o'clock in the morning to go to St. Louis, uh, not for any holiday purposes, um, but uh, I figure business travel is a reasonable thing to do. And I'm actually going to Missouri to buy a boat. Um, as some of you know, I've guided up on the Missouri River via jet boat. Uh, from the 2014 through the 2018 seasons and uh, I'm going to be doing that again starting in March 2021 so here in a few months and what we do here this is a stretch of river called Land of the Giants and uh, what we do is we run across Holter Reservoir up to Hauser Dam which is the next dam in the chain upstream from Holter Dam which is you know Holter Dam to Cascade is the the really heavily traveled drift boat section on the Missouri but putting in on Holter Reservoir and running up to the next dam in the chain, uh, it's called Land of the Giants. It's a very short tailwater. It's about four miles long, if that. And, uh, you know, it's a, a tailwater running into a lake, which tailwaters create big fish, lakes create big fish. And you combine the two and they create really big fish. Uh, you know, 18, 19 inch fish aren't worth pictures up there. Uh, average fish is 16 to 20 inches. Um, most seasons, some years it's a little smaller, but it's not at all uncommon to get 22 inch fish up there. And I know people who've gotten 27, 28 inch browns up there. Uh, biggest I've had anyone get was about 24. So, um, you know, your average, it's a place where your average fish is 20 inches um, pretty commonly and uh, certainly two to three pounds. And unlike the vast majority of the waters around here, it's best in April, May, June, early July. So before the Yellowstone and most of the other stuff around me gets fishable. Now, because you're using a power boat, uh, I'm buying a 20 year old inboard jet boat with a 120 engine on it. Um, because you're using a power boat, you know, running gas, and then also there's additional launch fees because you actually launch at a private access. Um, the, these trips run a lot more money. The average price that I'm seeing right now is between six and seven hundred dollars. Um, 
for 2021 just to reestablish my business up there i'm going to be offering that trip from april through june you know before i get busy down here uh for 525 so you will not find that any any cheaper anywhere and so if you're looking to check out this land of the giants section of the missouri which i, I don't want to give the impression that it's you know somehow you know undiscovered or uncrowded or whatever because it's actually pretty busy up there but uh if you want to go hunting some big fish in the spring, early summer in Montana, give me a call because I'm, I'm making folks a really, really good deal because, you know, having been out of it for a couple of years, I need to sort of reestablish my clientele up there. So again, 525 um, April through June for, for a day trip and half days won't be available just because, I'm, you know, it's not worth driving up there to do a half day for me. Um, 525 april through june 625 thereafter and we're looking at you know 14 to 18 16 to 20 somewhere in there average rainbows and at least in the springtime this is what they're eating they're eating the eggs of their brethren uh now you get in you get into late may and june then they're eating other stuff but uh that's why one of the reasons i'm tying this and uh hope to see some of you up there get some calls from you see uh i might get to it next week but probably the week after thanks for watching